Okay, everybody, this is what we have. We have a Winco 6000 watt generator. And what the goal is here, this is the original looking generator. What the original goal is here is that the um, we're going to remove everything and leave just the motor. Reason being is that the generator itself, the windings inside have let go. Overheated, I guess, and the slack within the windings melted, which uh, shorted the wires out and that's it. Generators no longer producing anything except sparks. So I'm not going to try and replace it because it's very expensive. Um, so what I've decided to do is just that. Take everything apart and leave just the motor and the framing. And I'm going to have to modify a few things. And I'm going to mount a 108 amp alternator with a adjustable voltage regulator. And the sole purpose will be for charging batteries. Nothing more. It was a good generator while it lasted, but it is no longer any good. So instead of disposing of it, that's actually originally where it came from was the recycling unit, um, a, a business there. They, they use these and I guess they had a flaw in the back end bearing. So the back end bearing piece there had to be remodified and that was done. And the generator was a good generator afterwards, but since then, the windings with inside the unit itself, the head, generating head, has give up and cooked itself. No longer good. So next stage is, is to remove everything and proceed with the alternator attached to the diesel engine. This is the Hatz diesel, one cylinder, direct injection. All right, off to the uh, next step. I wanted to show everybody this little power box I made up. The reason why I made this up is because on the generator itself, it had two plugs. It had a 50 amp, 120 volt plug, which is like a stove type plug. And then it had your normal 20 amp, 120 volt plug, which is just your normal household wall type plug. So to require the 50 amps worth of power, I took a stove cable and made the necessary adjustments and this is a, what do you want to call this? I guess it's like an electrical box. It's plastic. Then I cut a hole on top of it and I had these orange receptacles. I used those, put a gasket underneath it. And then I also ran a big long, big long cord, which is on the back side here, kind of a, as an extension cord. It's about 30 feet long, this, this cord here. So, you know, if I want to run it far away type deal, I can. And that's what I've done there. It's got six outlets. And you got the big power feed so I can draw 50 amps from uh, these particular outlets instead of only having the two on the 20 amp one. And I didn't have to breaker it because the generator itself has the breaker on it. So it worked out really, really well. Okay, here's all the bits and pieces that were removed. There's the generator head itself there. And then there's the top of the fuel tank and there's the panel. There's the panel back here. And there's some shrouding and there's the backing unit of the where the bearing assembly used to be for the armature. And there's some well nuts and bolts and miscellaneous things from taking it apart. And here's some more shrouding coverings. I'm using a flashlight because it's very dark where I'm at and I'm trying to use a flashlight to brighten everything up. I sure hope it's working. So it will no longer be the original generator itself. It will look like something completely different and it's going to operate in a completely different way. Alrighty.
Alrighty, here's the finish assembly. Yet need to be wired in. And what I had to do wasn't all that complicated really. I had to get a pulley for the shaft. It was kind of a multiple stage sized shaft coming out the end of it. And I couldn't go too close to the engine because I wanted to have a little bit of room. And I'm actually going to be replacing that pulley with a double pulley. And I'm actually going to be putting another alternator back right here. So it'll be a dual alternator. The motor will support it strong enough. At the same time, this motor was originally a 3600 RPM motor. But um, alternators do not need 3600 worth of RPMs. They will work fine off of 1500 RPMs as long as the power is there to support it. So I'm going to play with that to see how low I can make the RPMs and have a good output from the alternator and uh, the motor being able to supply the power needed. And what I had to do was I had to move, oh, I'm getting this flashlight. You can see the rails the engine sits on. It used to be the opposite. The engine used to be on the other side. So what I had to do is I had to move these rails to compensate for the adjustments that uh, was going to fit this need so it wasn't real complicated, just ground out the welds and moved them over to the necessary place and re-welded them in. And I'm not going to put all the shrouding back on it, there's no need for it. Yet I need to hook a fuel tank up to it, but that's not complicated. And I'm not worried about having that in the video. Um, so there it is. There's the alternator. I hope this light's not producing too much glare. I increased pulley size just a little bit, not a whole lot. That's going to modify the RPMs. There's my exhaust hole, which there's the hole for the wall. It goes right outside the wall. This is a, an outbuilding, so it's not part of the house or anything like that. So a little bit of fumes develop with inside the building. Um, nothing's going to know about it except the emptiness of the building. So it's just a shelter basically, keep it out of the weather and type thing. Great motor though, really like this motor. It's uh, had it for a couple of years now, never gave me one blink of problem. It's electric start, also pull start, and pull start, one half a pull and it's running. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this modification. And when I managed to get the second alternator on there, I will make a video of it as well, but that won't be for months down the road. We're in winter time and um, it's a little bit nasty out working in the cold. So this was just a quick fix because the generator itself kind of burnt out and well I have to have something to, you know, charge up some batteries just in case there's no sunshine whatsoever. So therefore I modified this kind of in a quick way really, but secure, it won't fall apart. It's secure and good and solid. But I'm looking forward to getting a second alternator on here. Dual purpose. Alrighty, thank you for watching. Here is the second alternator I will be installing on that uh, generator. You seen? It's an oldie, but a goodie. This one here is. It's only 80 amps, but I'll tell you the size of this and the weight to it. That 80 amps is not comparable to today's alternators in the 80 amp field completely different in amperage this is a truer amp compared to the newer ones but i mean 80 amps is 80 amps but i'm sure everybody gets the picture some of this old school stuff was built like indestructible compared to the newer things so this is what i have I actually picked it up from a fella he used to own a, a pretty large business and he dealt with a lot of this type of thing and he got out of that business and he had a few odds and ends left over so he asked me if I was interested in it and I, I asked him what the price was and he made it affordable so I kind of bought it up. I just figured I'd show everybody the second alternator that will be going on to it but that's down the road months about four or five months away from now. I might uh, get a video on that one as well. Thank you for watching.